Greetings, YouTube. Alan is here. I'm back. And I just wanted to go over a quick recap of what uh, the Pro Tour little day one was like. Um, there's already a snapshot article uh, up if you wanted to take a look at it. And uh, I just want to discuss my thoughts on the metagame, uh, the new hero that's been revealed, and uh, yeah, just my thoughts. So please like, comment, subscribe. I usually don't do these kind of videos. I mean, I usually more focus on like deck techs and gameplay, but I thought this would be fun to talk about. So all right, first things first, let's go to the part where I think everyone is most interested about uh, the new Emperor, Drakai of Acer, Acer, something like that. Um, so as a lot of people expected, he is a warrior wizard. He's also draconic, which is not surprising, but he's also royal. So he has two talents and two classes. And we don't, well, assuming royal is a talent. We don't know what royal entails quite yet. Uh, it could be related to his armor, his weapon, or maybe there's even going to be a card pool for the royal talent. But uh, we know the draconic cards already. Uh, we know the generic warrior or the basic warrior and wizard pool already. But the most interesting part is his ability. You may only have red cards in your deck. An action costs three resources. Search your deck for Command and Conquer. Attack with it, then shuffle. So this is really weird, first of all. He's also 15 health. So usually wizards have lower health uh, because they do some broken stuff. Uh, I guess he has access to the Storm Striders. Um, even still, like... The fact that you can only run red cards is pretty surprising. I mean, it's not too surprising. I'm just wondering how it'll work. It's definitely like you're going to mix in some kind of physical and arcane damage, kind of like a rune blade, to be honest, which is kind of funny, but <laughs> it is what it is. Um, in the stream, James White said that this is only going to be a young hero um, in the new set. So no Emperor in CC for now, just in Blitz and yeah, I think we'll definitely need to see more cards like the weapon or maybe the royal uh, talent cards before we make a judgment on anything because if this is all we know, making a full red line deck and having your hero ability cost three resources seems pretty crazy. I mean, I guess Tunic will help a lot, but even still, yeah. Or you could run Flame Skill Furnace too, actually. You could pitch two reds. That would give you three resources um, total in a turn still not quite enough to play command and conquer because you'll need to play a red pitch and then pitch again for two reasons i don't know it's weird uh blood of Trakai, maybe stonks will go up because your entire deck will be red so there's no downside to running i guess the best red resource card for him um brave forge bracers may go up it depends if like he needs a fridge or if he prefers to have like metacarpus nodes or things like that but since he's a blitz hero you'll have like the 11 equipment suite so i i think like cards like brave forge will be interesting but yeah i think his weapon will really define um more about his play style just from his hero ability alone i don't think we know too much but they, which i think is smart about lss um that way that we don't know too much and the next thing i want to comment on is the hero border it looks very unique you can see like the dragons on the side here um it's like Volcor-esque, but also like a little royal. It seems like it's a bit of golden also. And then lastly, down here, it says MKT30. I'm not sure if this is like in reference to like the giant hero cards or something, but I just thought MKT would be was interesting. So yeah, that's everything uh, we know currently about the new hero. And uh, let's, uh, let's move on to the metagame snapshot. So day one saw 354 players at the Pro Tour Lil. Uh, I don't actually quite remember how many players played at New Jersey, but I will assume it was more than 354, but not too much more. And yeah, traveling from all over the world, including 26 of the top 30 highest ranked players on the planet. Hmm, it's pretty good. Uh, let's see. Yeah, if you don't know the format, it was three rounds of draft followed by four rounds of CC for day one. I believe if you're at least 4-3, uh, you make day two. So uh, the draft, first of all, let's talk about uh, the draft metagame. We saw 147 Fi, 105 Dromai, and... Huh. This has 102, this has 107. It's pretty close, so I don't think it matters too much. But I did the numbers already on this, basically. So this Fi uh, number basically means there was around 33% Fi. So that means... No, sorry, 41% Fi. So that means in every... Actually, is that right? Let me do some quick math. 147 plus 105 plus... Let's try 107. 
and then 147 divided by 359 is yeah about 41 percent so that averages out to 3.3 fives per pod and then the other two heroes are basically like 2.2 2.3 um so yeah that basically makes total sense on average you're gonna have like three fives two dromice two icelanders and then whichever the last that's like set that's seven seats and whoever the eighth uh player drafts kind of like pushes that over the edge like if there's four fives it's a little weaker if there's three dromize it's definitely weaker if there's three icelanders definitely weaker so yeah not nothing too surprising here uh, i kind of wish they also gave us a breakdown of which, which heroes won which pods um from what i've heard dromai did really well uh in the draft in these draft pods um on the stream we saw matt rogers pilot dromai uh to a 3-0 finish and yeah i think dromai was i think dromai might have been like a lot of people expected dromai to be strong but i think at the calling singapore mostly icelanders did well if i am correct um so this is like a i guess like a little adaptation to that i think five is like draft is not too much different i would say i think the meta game is fairly fairly solved i would say i think all three heroes are good it's just a matter of like playing them well piloting well playing very tight things like that and let's see let's go into the cc representation i think it's very um nothing too surprising here briar being the most represented makes sense considering we saw four briars in singapore um which a lot of people figured as briars basically better than viscerai going forward which i would mostly agree with uh, viscerai is still very highly represented um, which may or may not be correct in my opinion. I think Briar just might be a bit stronger than Viscerai. Viscerai maybe has like one matchup that's a little better for him, but yeah. 59 Prism is actually very surprising. So Briar and Viscerai are not good matchups for Prism. And I would say at the Calling Singapore, Dash was not a good matchup for Prism either. But if the Dash is playing the new Wombat Talashar Dash, then Prism can definitely fatigue that deck. Uh, if Dash is playing like a pistol high octane build though, um, it can definitely like beat Prism. So I'm surprised there's a very high representation of Prism. I think a lot of people, maybe a good amount of Prism mains, and also just the fact that this is probably going to be the last Pro Tour that Prism can play in. So if you want to win the special Pro Tour prize card, um, this will be the only time to do it for Prism. Same will probably go for Briar. And uh, next after Prism is Fi at 36. So uh, from what I know, most of the Fies are on combo uh, and not the Kadachi list, that top aided Singapore. Um, I think combo is better. I think it has more matchups that you can sort of just push out of the meta, whereas Kadachi is kind of like, it's almost like you're playing a more fair game. So I think uh, more combo makes sense. Uh, even though I think playing Kadachi is more fun, I think combo is just better, even after the stubby ban. Uh, after that is Oldham, which is... I think extremely surprising because uh, sure you can have a good matchup into Briar, Viserai, and Fi, but the fact that Dash won the Calling Singapore, it seemed pretty clear that Dash representation was going to go up this tournament, and the fact that Oldham representation is pretty high is kind of surprising. Maybe it would have been even higher if Dash didn't win the Calling Singapore, but yeah, the fact that Dash can just go to a sideboard pistol plan and Oldham somewhat is like finds it difficult to to beat compared to someone like bravo i'm 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 pretty surprised that oldham is this high but i think oldham can still do well uh he can do well against Fi. he can do well against viscera and briar he can do well against bravo and maybe dash if he's aggressive enough but we'll see uh bravo showstopper and dash are tied at 27 um bravo showstopper so going into this tournament so before I'll just talk about these main represent these uh, six main represented heroes first. Going into this event, I figured that guardians were going to go down in representation. Uh, one because dash is more prevalent, uh, and two because I don't think Briar is necessarily the easiest matchup for guardian. I think Briar can definitely still just like beat Bravo or Oldham. I think Viserai struggles a little more simply because i think viscerai needs more cards to do what he wants to do like i think you know this wants to play like mob skies into an attack into rosetta which is usually like three cards whereas briar if need be he can just play one card you know snatch for four with no arsenal and pass and it's still good whereas i don't think viscerai has that luxury 
So I think Briar plays better into the Guardians. And also, you know, Prism and Dash being prevalent, I think Guardian stocks went down. And I think because of that, Phi stocks went up. So Phi struggled into the Guardians, uh, but he can do well into aggro, he can do well into Dash, and he can do well into Prism. So I think the fact that uh, Guardian sort of was less popular this time around meant that Phi could definitely come in and do well. And uh, going into the rest, uh, nothing too surprising, just like some small representation here and there, like seven Dories, seven Lexi, six Icelander, six Dromai, three Katsu, two Levia, two Kano, one Reiner, and one Bolton. We actually saw Bolton on the, the feature match, and uh, you should go watch that because uh, triple Lumina on like turn three is pretty crazy. So um, going into the top or three players currently who are 7-0, and actually, let's use this image instead because I like this one better. There are three players that are 7-0 and right now, and I was actually very surprised to hear what heroes they were on. So Aang, or Aang, or no, Chu Aang is on Prism, uh, Douglas Easton is on Lexi, and, or Easton Douglas is on Lexi, and Dagon White is on Phi. So Phi, be, being 7-0, and I was not too surprised. Uh, Prism, I was pretty surprised. And then Lexi, I was very surprised. So I think that this metagame is like really open and the fact that these three heroes prism lexi and fire may are currently seven and oh speaks uh a lot of speaks volumes about the meta and that it's not just like you know room blades at the top and uh yeah going through uh ian zhang my boy hopefully he uh continues his uh good good fortune and uh good gameplay um he's also on prism uh pablo i believe he's on viscerai uh the last pro tour winner um apologies if you're watching this and i didn't recognize your name but uh steel fur i know he's a youtuber also i'm not sure who he's on uh sasha markovich uh very famous player i would say i believe he's on briar he was on the feature match I'm, i believe uh five and two uh and yeah actually i think he was on explosive growth briar if i'm not mistaken but yeah i think this meta is really interesting uh prism being in the uh, a 7-0 bracket is quite surprising considering all the Briars and Viscerize, but it could just be... Well, the thing is, I mean, Prism still has play into the aggro matchups, and it's kind of a gamble. I think the interesting part is the players preparing to play Prism prepare for two different very styles, whether they're going Heralds or Auras. If they're going Heralds and you side in, like, you know, six plus poppers, like eight poppers, nine poppers, you can have a really good time. But if you side in more poppers, which disrupts your own proactive plan on like Viscerai, or, um, for example, and Prism is playing Auras, then it gets a little awkward. But still, I think overall, they still have favored matchups into Prism. So I'm very surprised that uh, Prism is 7-0. Zero, zero. Uh, Phi being 7-0, I'm not too surprised. I think Phi has... Mm, he plays, I would say, the worst into the Guardians, uh, but better into most everything else. I would say he's better into Prism, better, better into Vis or Briar and Viscerai uh, than other options. And I think he can race Dash, Talisar, Talishar Dash perfectly fine. And then Lexi being 7-0 is actually pretty nuts. So from what I've heard, this uh, Lexi deck is like a new unique, or not new or unique necessarily, but like a, a unique, not unique, sorry, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, handcrafted for the meta there we go so very interesting to see hopefully he uh, makes it to the top eight or something or i'll probably see his list somewhere on the internet it'll be very interesting to see how that's going and yeah other than that i you know i know there's a oldham that's six one for sure there's probably briars and viscerize in the six one um and yeah i haven't heard any of the other lower representation heroes uh making splashes in the event yet but uh, hopefully we'll see after day two uh, what makes top eight and uh, what we'll see. And that's everything in my little pro tour little recap. Uh, we got the new hero. Still have no idea how that's going to work out. And yeah, the top players in the event. So uh, that's all for this. Uh, nothing much else. I'll see if I want to do another day two recap. Maybe I will. Probably will. But yeah, in the meantime, uh, have a good one.